All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're going to be talking about how to use style and manipulate the text tool inside of Adobe Photoshop so that you can add labels or use text to make logos, all those fun, fancy things that people need to know how to do, we're going to mostly be talking about here today. And this is kind of like a simple little sample about what we're going to be doing. We're going to be talking about using the text tool, stylizing it a little bit with different font styles and italicizing it and everything. And also we're going to talk about writing fonts on top of a shape. So the first thing you need to do is obviously open yourself up a new document and you can hit the T button or you can find the T shape here in your sidebar. Sometimes it might be hiding underneath one of these other icons. And we're going to use that to write just about anything that we want. And I'm going to set my color up here at the top is where all of our tool controls are at the top of the screen, kind of off to the left. There's a little bo box here next to the alignment buttons, kind of like if you've ever used a word editor like Microsoft Word. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to pick a color that's like black, something easy to see on white. And then we're going to write something. So we're going to say uh, crab people because why not? And I'm writing this particular font or this text in Open Sans font. If you click on this font selector here, you can select from any font that you currently have installed on your computer. This includes things that you've installed yourself, like up here at the top, here's some of the ones I've been playing with recently. And then down here is all of the system fonts where you can get like a nice Calibri. That's a very nice sans serif. Let's go with Calibri actually. And from here, I can do a couple of different things with it. I can click to the side here, and a lot of different fonts come with a number of different sec or secondary or sub styles that you can use. You can go with light. Usually a light font is a sort of pencil thin font that you can use for very elegant thin writing. You can also, if I select this again, by hitting the T button to bring up the text tool and then just double clicking on a text chunk somewhere on my screen. Then I can also go with a light italic, which is same thing, just slightly slanted because it's italicized. Or I could go up to bold. Or bold italic to make it look fancy. Now, don't think that you have to leave your text one style and have this entire object, you know, one style and have to duplicate it by holding alt and dragging it and then saying something else. You can have all of your text controlled by one single piece of text. A good way to show that, let me just delete this. I'll bring out my text tool again. I can actually either just select and click somewhere on the screen to start typing. And then you got to do stuff like, you know, hitting return to start another line, and sometimes they get all jankled up and it's hard to manage them. But instead, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna just delete this layer and start a new one over here in the layers panel. I can hit the T tool and I can click and drag and get myself a very nice text field where I can say, howdy, folks, I'm typing on other lines, but you're telling me, Larry, that something wrong with this font or whatever settings you have as defaults from what you were messing around with earlier today, the, the text is all smooshed. And you're right. And that's where this character window is going to come in handy. This window, and you can access all your windows by going up to the window pull down menu and finding character, which is the letter character styles and stuff like that. And this is going to give us a finer tuned control over what our font is doing. So if I select everything here, you see that there's a little icon here, if we zoom in, that's two A's sitting on top of each other. That's the distance between the two lines. And this I actually need to either select auto, which is usually what you want just to start out with, or you can manually adjust it yourself using a point size in order to adjust the spacing between words. This is really handy if you have a font where by default there's a huge gap between the different lines and you'd like to clean up the spacing so that you don't have to manually adjust every single line by itself. Or you can just let auto do its thing, which is very nice to do. Alternatively, if we dive back through here and I delete this, 
and I click here again, I can say, what's a good logo name for a company? I can say, um, super ties. We'll just say that we have a, a tie brand that's very superhero oriented and we want to stylize this so that it looks a little bit different. So I'll hit control T and I'll just drag from the side here to make it bigger. If you have older versions of Photoshop, you might need to hold shift to make sure this stays in the same aspect ratio and doesn't get all smooshed when you transform it to a larger size on the fly. And what do I want to do with this? Well, the first thing that's worth mentioning is you'll see over here as I manipulate this text, if I transform this text using the transform tool rather than upping the size through the text tool, it'll still update what size this is in this panel over here and also up at the top of the screen so that you always know what size the text is. But I can also manipulate this font a little bit so that I get some cool effects. So I can hit the T tool again, select it by double clicking, and then I can do things like increasing the kerning or the letting, which is this little separation of the two letters, the horizontal arrow, and I can increase the gap between each of the letters so I can make it look super duper stretched out, which allows me some different options for making this look stylized and fancy. On top of that, perhaps I want this super part to be bold, but not italic, so I can select that separately and make it just regular bold, and then I can make ties, because ties are thin, elegant, decorative pieces of fabric you wear on your chest. I can then reduce the thickness of this type, but I want to keep it italicized to a lower version, a less bold version of Calibri. And this is starting to look like a fancier piece of text. Now, if I'm really feeling suave, I'll select the layer in my layers palette and hit Control J. And the bottom layer, I'll leave alone. And the top layer, I will select and I will make super. What's a super color? Superman's got like this red cape thing going on, right? Let's make that red. And then I'll use V to select the move tool up here. And then I'll select this layer. And without selecting anything or clicking or dragging anything, I'll just use my arrow keys to nudge up and over the top layer, so now it looks stylized. Similarly, I can go to the bottom layer, drop down the opacity, and now it has a stylized, super duper looking drop shadow. So these are just some basic things that we can do with this. Let me just put this in a folder so we have it kind of off to the side. And now I'm going to show you how you can add these sorts of shapes to a path or make it look like we're drawing text like down here. This looks like writing on shapes down here looks like I've written this on the side of a sphere because technically I did. So the way that this works is you may or may not be familiar with paths already, but paths are like invisible wireframes inside of Photoshop where I can take this circle, which is this weird kind of like beige tan thing. Let's just make this black so it's easier to see. And I can hit control and select on the layers window over here on the side. I can, there's like this window of a preview of what's inside the layer. Click in there when you're holding control and it should select the edge of this shape with the little dancing line that tells you that it's selected. From here, I can select any tool used to make selections, either like the magic wand tool or I like the marquee tool. And I can right click this shape and I can find here, make a work path. I'm gonna set the tolerance to one pixel. And here in our sidebar, we have two pathways. We have the path that makes up the vector sized object on our page that is the actual object, and then the outline of that object, which if I remove this, you can see remains, that's because it's like traced it, like I've taken the outer skeleton of the sphere and I'm intending to use it to create things. So now that I've got this work path, I'm gonna make a fresh layer, I'm gonna hit my T tool, and now if I hover over this path, a little squiggly line comes in underneath of my text tool, and this allows me to select a spot to start from, and I can write, hello folks, 
yada, yada on the outside, and then I can, similarly to any other text layer, I can select it, I can make it bold, bold italic, I can even change the whole font entirely to my favorite font, on ramp, and then from here, I can do whatever I want with this. Similarly, you might say, but Larry, I picked the wrong spot on this shape, I need to change where the text starts and stops. Well, so if you have this problem where you want to change where your text starts and stops on the shape, go ahead and select the text itself and hold Alt, and you get these interesting little click and draggies that tell you where the start point of the text is and where the end point is. So the, the start point is where the X is, and the end point is where the circle is. It's, I know it's kind of hard to see, but you can just click and drag this, and you can smoosh the text as necessary to change where the start point is. Now, if you do this and you change that, which might be a little hinky, you might need to go back here and pull back the end point first, and then adjust where the start point goes. Similarly, if you click and drag the start point inside, or either of them inside, you can make it go from scaling the outside of the shape to scaling the inside like it's hiding out on the rim of a cave, which tends to be really handy if you're trying to manipulate text on the go. Now, it's worth me mentioning as somebody who plays around with text a lot, I tend not to use the shape tools in Photoshop nearly as much. I much prefer to take it into Illustrator, work on my fonts there, and then copy and paste the layers into Photoshop. That's just my preference. There's a lot of really great tools that you can use inside of here that gives you a lot of great flow and control over these objects. Similarly, if I take the pen tool and I, well, what kind of shape do I wanna draw? I can just kinda of like make a little line here. It's a derpy little drawing. I can take that same pen tool and I can draw on this too, because all the pen tool is, is it just creates a work path of some variety, an outline, a wireframe, and from there you can use that to make shapes, you can paste into it after you've made a selection out of it, that sort of stuff. Getting to know and understand paths when drawing and using the pen tool inside of Photoshop or making selections tends to be a really good thing to have in your repertoire of skills, and I thoroughly recommend going in and getting to know it a lot better. We'll be handling that in a different tutorial. So now that we've got these shapes, it's worth noting that you can adjust these by double-clicking on the layer itself, and here we can add color overlays and gradient overlays just like it's any other solid object inside of Photoshop. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. This has been a look at the type tool inside of Adobe Photoshop and some of the things that you can do with it. If you have any questions or comments, I'd be happy to help you out with whatever issues you might be running into when using this program, because a lot of this tends to just be practice while you're getting used to the software, and then you can make some pretty cool stuff out and about in the world. So until next time, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody.